Hi, my name's Neil Creswell. I run the Kickstarter Watches and Horology Microbrands group on Facebook. I think we're getting close to about 7,000 members now. And I'm really excited. I uh, just received today um, a new watch. Uh, well, not really a surprise. I do get a lot of new watches. But this one I'm particularly excited about because it's a um, chronograph from Renzo. Renzo are a new company and they're up on Kickstarter right now. And this is a little unusual for me. Um, this is actually a quartz chronograph. It's a dressy quartz. And... Um, uh, it's just a little bit different for me. I only have two quartz watches in my collection. I'm not normally a quartz fan personally, and there's nothing wrong with quartz. There's some, you know, good pros for using a quartz watch. I just personally like uh, mechanical watches. So for me to be interested in a quartz watch, you know, to me that's something special. So that's why I wanted to share this. Um, I think they're a little bit nervous uh, because they know when I do my unboxings, I say exactly what I think. If there's something I don't like, I'll definitely tell you. If there's something really bad, I'll certainly say that, and this is going to get published no matter what. So I'm a very upfront kind of a person, and that's what our group's all about. The group is for people who back watches. We don't allow advertising in there. Uh, if anybody comes in who's a shill to recommend a watch, we'll just ban them on the spot. So we are really looking out for the backer. Uh, so um, what I want to give you is just an honest first look, hands-on appraisal, all the pros and cons of the watch. Um, of course, I do have to say I really like the look of this watch, um, and the reason I'm showing you the picture of the watch first rather than uh, the case before uh, the uh, packaging before we begin the unboxing is, um, you know, there's a few nice things that you get in a dress watch that I would like, um, which I've seen before, like the concentric circles and so on around the subdials. But uh, just look at that uh, kind of blue slash purpley blue color on the. Uh, even on the chapter ring, you know, the the, the colour for the indices, that, that colour's a little unusual. So I'm really hoping that's what I'm going to be getting here. I know that a lot of photographs are professionally done, you know, maybe they might have certain filters applied to them. So we don't know quite what's in the bag. I have been promised that the packaging here is the actual production packaging. The only thing that's missing from it is the warranty card, of course. This is a pre-production prototype. So let's get stuck in, because uh, I know you don't want to be looking at that screenshot, but I, that's what really drew me to the watch. It's an unusual dress watch, and it's, you know, being a, being a quartz, it's under $200, yet it's a really good quartz. It's Swiss made and um, very good movement, and uh, with the particular battery and, and the movement that they picked, uh, with a Swiss movement and a particular Swiss battery, you can go four and a half years on average before you even need to consider changing that battery. So... Um, definitely an awesome combination for a quartz watch and uh, I'll talk about pricing later on but if you're going to talk about chronographs and you get a mechanical they are much more expensive than three hand watches so um, you, you know by, by several multiples of, of the price you're paying here so let's get stuck in I really don't know what's in here and uh, if they're watching this video which I think they will do at some point they're probably, probably nervously waiting too. So, uh, sorry about that, just jog the camera. So, um, yeah, so I know that obviously the outer packaging is a one-off because they sent it to me from their um, offices, but the internal contents should be exactly the same as you get in a production package. Uh, oh, that's just paperwork, so I'm just going to throw that on the floor for now. I promise you I will. I do clear up. I'm not so slovenly as I appear during these videos. Uh, and there will be some other differences um, because this is pre-production, so let's cover the biggest uh, two of those that I'm aware of. The first one is this pre-production is kind of a sample prototype, the ones they used for the photography. Um, is 40 millimeter. Uh, that's the diameter um, excluding the crown. Uh, and, and, the, and the push button. So basically, uh, under pushes. So the production is going to be 42 millimeter. So that's that's the biggest one. Now, as a dress watch, 40 millimeter might be a better choice. However, it is a chronograph. It's a combination dress watch and chronograph. And when you have those sub dials, a little bit bigger is better. And 42 is the most popular size of watch. So I think they're going the right way with that. I'm actually wearing another chronograph now. I have to go check, but I. I'll put it in the comments. This one's a 42 millimeter, I believe. Oh, and by the way, this one's mechanical and uh, more than double the price. And it was another Kickstarter, and my favorite watch for last year. So they've really done the 
a good job on the packaging. I'm just trying to save time by cutting away here. If you really don't want to spend five minutes watching me do the unpacking, but at least you know this is a uh, one-off shot unboxing. I don't edit it. So you got all my bloopers and you get to see what I see and get my first impressions. So this now is switching over to their, um, I guess, production packaging. So there's an outer cardboard box, and I like the fact that it's pretty sturdy. It's thick, it's not thin. Um, it's not giving way, so whatever's inside padding is pretty good. So that that's good. I mean, quartz watches are, are pretty robust. There's, there's less going on with them than mechanical ones. Um, but still, you really want good packaging on any watch, So you know, because your box gets squashed with a thousand others or somebody throws it around or something. Um, so just not the prettiest of boxes, but for the price, I'm not complaining, and I suspect there might be something nicer inside. Let's see. And there's a very, it fits very well. There is an internal box that fits precisely in, in the outer cardboard one. Just throw that down there. Um, and this one, it looks nicer. This is, so this is good enough to give us a present. Um, no labeling on the external uh, box uh, black cover. Um, who knows, maybe they'll print their branding on that. Um, or and then I'm probably going to have this upside down. There we go. There is actually a Renzo labeling here. So this actually makes a nice gift. If you want to do a gift box and take it outside the cardboard box, but always keep your cardboard boxes for any watch you buy, uh, Kickstarter or elsewhere, because it makes it much easier to return for service. You've got an exact fitting box for this, and it's not that big. Just throw it at the back of a cupboard somewhere. Um, that's my first advice. Uh, my second advice, um, uh, whether it's Renzo or anyone else, and you're getting it through a mail order, not walking into a store to buy it, um, or in this case, online shopping, sorry, rather than mail order, um, why not do an unboxing video? First of all, others can benefit from watching the video, but the real benefit is for you because you can open it up and if there's something wrong, maybe it got damaged in transit, you get to know all about uh, the issues, but you can, uh, you can, you know, kind of show that you received it in that particular state. You didn't just drop it and the grass, glass clanked or something. So I'm not anticipating any issues, particularly with this watch, because it's Swiss made. Oh, this is really nice. So they've got a couple of um, straps holding uh, nothing. Uh, they did, I thought this was paperwork, uh, just holding in here. So you could actually put some spare uh, bands along here maybe in the future or the paperwork just to get it out of the way. So it's actually pretty pretty thick uh, material, um, sturdy, not flimsy like cardboard. And there we have the watch. So this is uh, my first look at this, and I'm going to just stick my head around the side of the camera here. Ooh, I'm happy with that. I Obviously it's not quite so purple as in the pictures. They probably gave it a warm filter of some type. But it's... Uh, Got a nice kind of a sky blue, which is what I was probably guessing it was going to be. So this is a uh, just a little bit different to to your typical um, color scheme you get on a watch, and that's why it really draw me to this collection. If you don't like this kind of white background, they have the other combinations you'd expect, like black faced watches with uh, I think gold uh, gold uh, accents, highlights on the indices, and so on. So let's get this out. It seems pretty stiff. I want to make sure is that part of the watch? Yes it is. Definitely stiff so I'm reaching for the second strap. Really well packaged. There's a little bonus cleaning cloth in there. A uh, nice color. So I actually like the box. It's um, Let's talk about this. This is um, it's a hard velvet material. don't know what it is. It's not. It's a very hard foam I suspect very dense foam so you can't see that it's foam so it barely gives with your finger but it does give a few millimeters so that means you're going to have some cushioning if so this is a definitely a right box to use for shipping or even for traveling it's nice and small so i do like the packaging good job renzo it's a lot better than some of the other ones i've seen um of course i don't have any paperwork with it but you know this is a prototype so they'll probably have a little instruction manual which is probably what's going to fit in the lid of that box there. So I'm looking at this watch and uh, first impressions are very interesting. I should tell you a few more things about differences between the prototype and the production. Um, 
you know the the watch straps are actually nicer than you normally get i uh, i mean they get they have nice features like the quick release which is really a huge plus you base but the quick release is kind of not quite right on this one that and that's a known issue with the pre-production that will be fixed in production but basically you pull these pins down and i could do this right now i'll do it in a minute just in case it doesn't line out properly uh, to try and get it back in uh, but you pull the pin down and, and it instantly the strap comes out and you could put another strap in just pull the pin in and, and release it and there's a couple of holes where these spring bars go if you didn't have the quick release you'd have to stick a, a little tool in here get a spring bar tool and I often end up uh, pinching the end of the leather and it kind of frays it a bit so I, you know quick release is really nice um, it's a very nice option but what's particularly interesting about uh, straps like this uh, normally for this price range, you're talking under $200, you're going to get genuine leather, which is actually bad. It sounds good because it's leather. Genuine leather means it's real leather, but it's the lowest grade of real leather. It's made from odds and ends, pieces of leather kind of glued together. Uh, it's not going to last. Um, there's, there's several other grades of leather. There's top grain and there's full grain, which is the best. And this is full grain leather. And also it will be full grain leather in production. I believe this is going to be a 20 millimeter lug width here because this is 40 millimeters. And I do have an open question with them. Okay, so you're going to be 42 millimeters. So is it going to be 22 millimeters on production, which would be normal for 42? 20 will probably work still as a dress watch. But let's start looking at some of these uh, features here. So I really, let's try the strap out first. It's not going to be the exact same strap you're going to be getting, but it, it's it's a it's a pretty good strap. So that's a good starting point. And obviously, it's one they're looking at because when you get a a pre-production prototype sample from the factory, you're looking at uh, different combinations to use with it. So I do know that the uh, this one is an Italian calfskin full grain, so with the crocodile patterning. So that's kind of uh, a faux crocodile, which crocodile graining actually looks really good on a strap. Um, and uh, definitely looks good on a dress watch. Uh, maybe if I had a diver, I wouldn't want to have that, but for, for this style of watch, it's perfect. I do know that the uh, retail one is going to be Italian full grain as well, but I don't think it's calf, calf skin, and I'm not sure whether it's just going to be kind of a more straight modern look to it, which would also work, or whether it's going to be um, crocodile graining. But uh, certainly that's that's an option. I've just noticed the sign buckle here, very nice. Um, and also on the crown, you can see right now there's a little um, blue line. You're not going to get that in the production one. Uh, they they realize that that doesn't uh, always work with every color of strap. Um, but I think that blue actually goes pretty well with the indices, um, which actually look really nice. I'm really happy with the look of this watch. Um, I actually asked for this particular colorway if they had it from their samples um, because it's the one that they originally fe featured and yeah the, the blue is awesome and one of the features you get on this watch that you wouldn't normally get at this price point uh, can you see there's like a chapter in the, in the inside of the bezel you actually have indices and markers all around there so um, Maybe they're a bit superfluous because you have the uh, second markers on, on here, but it's definitely it's a nice feature because you tend to look at this at an angle. Uh, it is a flat dial. I did ask if it was going to be domed in production. It won't, but the style of this from the side is nice. They've actually, normally just people just have it straight, and I thought this was a catalog watch, uh, possibly even. A uh, catalog uh, case, not watch, sorry. I know that the uh, dial design is not, not a catalog one, um, but I can see they've got a indented groove here, a very nice decoration I don't normally see. Um, so it's kind of, um, and they've also got one down here, which is probably, is that the case back? Yes, that is the case back. And there's a nice contrast with brushing on the case back and uh, polished everywhere else. So the fact you've got like two uh, lines which are indented on the sides it looks really nice um, so I don't mind the fact that it's flat it is gonna you know it's a little bit thicker than uh, a hand wound dress watch um, but it's it's much thinner than than a diver or something like that so keeping it flat will help because you could wear this as a dress watch um, let's get some measurements in I know that we're going to be doing 42 in production but I would like to at least see 
um, the height because I, I doubt that height would be any different in production so um, I'm seeing ooh, that's better than I thought 10.8 that is nice let's just squeeze that a bit yeah 10.8 millimeters so just under 11 millimeters height that's excellent if you're 10 or 11 millimeters that's totally fine for this price point, especially with a chrono. If it was um, because you've got you know chrono, you've got hands over other hands, um, and so on. If it was um, more than twelve or a little bit more than that, it would be less of a dressy style, and they'd probably need to to curve this. But I do like the straight sides on this; it's pretty decent, I think. Um, so about the chronograph itself, um, I don't know if, how well you can see on this. Is my I'm not a you know. I do a lot of reviews, but I'm not a professional reviewer. I'm a buyer, so I'm just using my uh, GoPro here as, as my camera, which is what I normally do. Um, you can see the sub-dials there. I don't know if you can catch it so much on this. I can see it, but there's a um, each of those sub-dials has a sunburst effect, which I really like. You'll see it more on other colors, like perhaps a blue one. Uh, I've looked at some of their other colors that they've got online. Um, and... Uh, you know, I can I can see it more clearly because it's, this is a white face dial. You'll see it less, but nevertheless, I'm still seeing the kind of the radiating rays in those three sub dials. Very nice sunburst effect, and uh, it's probably not going to pick it up because this is white. But there should be very closely grained concentric circles. Yes, they're there. I had to kind of like uh, <laughs> use a magnifying glass off from the side. So this is probably not going to pick up. I'll try once. It might blur. No, it's not going to pick up, not enough light. Uh, or maybe there's a macro mode, and I just want to do one continuous shot here for you, because it's definitely, I believe, in first impressions. So it, it's got, you know, concentric circles, a very nice texture to it, as well as the sunburst effect. I just love that blue color, and with the indices and the dots, it's, it's really well done. The hands are kind of a blue steel. They're almost like blued hands, which um, is when you heat treat hands, which is a really nice touch. Um, not a huge fan of the large Renzo next to the logo. A small Renzo would have been nicer, but it's not, um, you know, that, that's it. It's not, they're not really branding it in any other way. So that's, uh, not too bad, I guess. And maybe that's just a minor takeaway there. Uh, if it was me, I would prefer just the logo and the branding on the back, but they're new. They've got to get established and it's not bad. Let's compare. I mean, the watch I'm wearing now, that's also branding on the front, Marlowe, um, and it's but it's a little bit smaller uh, but Renzo it's cleanly done I I wonder if it's 3d printed because it looks uh, looks like it's raised a little bit it's not applied the indices are applied uh, by the way which is a nice touch um, don't want to have painted indices on this and I understand they're going to be loomed in production so this may not be loomed we'll see um, but it nevertheless it's uh, I think you know I'm really happy with this. So talking about the features on the watch, you, you'll probably have noticed already, you obviously get a date feature. Um, and then if I push this in, or pull this out to just play with the time a little bit. Yeah, it was shipped, poured out. That's how it should be shipped um, because that stops the battery. I don't want to use the battery while you're traveling. And also it could be, you know, if, there's, if it's banged around uh, a rough shipping company or something, uh, you don't want to do that. So um, hands are moving fine. Grip is fine, even though it's a fairly small thing. Uh, uh, grip. It's got some very nice kind of like uh, teething on it. Um, they've even got the signed crown. That's nice. I like that. Uh, so um, put it in so it should start ticking and you'll get a second hand tick um, that's on the right. I normally get this on the left on my chronographs but um, uh, you know so you've got the normal second hand function this is totally normal in a chronograph the big second hand is actually for your stopwatch function which is what a chronograph does but you should be able to pull it out uh two stop positions one stop position would be the date so it's still ticking should still tick yep i've already poured it out so now if i flick the wheel or turn it rather than flick it um anti-clockwise nothing happening there clockwise there we go 31 one, two, three, four. I just stop at four. Uh, so yeah, so it's got the two positions. You pull it out the first position and you can change the date. You pull it out to the second position and you can change the time. Now, what I would always do if you're setting a watch, pull it out to the second position first, 
turn that hour hand past 12 to see if the date ticks over because that way you use it 12 noon or 12 midnight if this was a mechanical watch i would uh, and i probably want to do this to be safe also on a quartz watch i would not try and change the date between um 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock 10 p.m and 2 a.m um but you know get beyond that you can change the date but it, it's very easy to set to start your chronograph uh you just press the top button here and the, the, probably you're going to get the main second hand ticking around it is a quartz and it's doing a single tick per second it's a little bit different to um you know mechanicals that can do a uh, kind of a more smoother sweep but the other side of the coin let's talk about that a little bit is uh, you have ac more accuracy, uh, much more accurate. Uh, so you're going to not need to adjust the time on this very often. I think they said something like 0 0.07 seconds per day maximum discrepancy. Whereas on your typical um, good quality entry level Swiss uh, chronograph, you're going to be uh, four seconds a day or, or sometimes even more than that eight or nine seconds a day so um i mean the the very really expensive ones will just be a second or two a day so basically um it, you probably don't even need to adjust this on a weekly basis probably like once a month or or something like that if you want a fairly accurate time um so that's a nice plus so you press again to stop if you want to start it again and pick up you can so as it goes around you're counting the seconds and then this dial on the left is the um, uh, minutes in 30 minute intervals and then the dial at the bottom is uh, kind of aggregating those so you can get up to that's in that's going to be hours so it's a nice feature and then the reset button is the bottom one and uh, because it's not mechanical it's quartz it's probably going to move all the way around the dial uh, which I actually like the look of some people don't so press it, and there we go. I actually love the look of that when that happens. I'm going to just do that again. So I'm playing with the watch at this point. I only play with it once, I promise. Here we go. Yeah, so some people don't like that. They like it to snap back instantly. But really, when you're resetting the chronograph, are you going to be recording again like the second after? No, you're not. It just takes a second to go back, and I think that's really cool. I just, just always enjoy that a lot. Um, so... Uh, let's see, we haven't looked at the back yet. So it says all stainless steel, Swiss made, uh, 5 ATM, which is 5 atmospheres, that's 50 meters. Because it's not a screw down crown, it's just a pull out crown, um, that's the maximum water rating you can get for a, for a pull out crown. It's going to have a couple of gaskets underneath the crown. So you, 50 meters means uh, you could certainly go swimming with this. Um, I wouldn't personally take it like diving um but even though you think you could dive down 50 meters you the actual uh, practical applications less this is better than the uh cheaper end watches for sure so they didn't cut corners on the battery and and the movement with a with a swiss and then swiss made which costs a little bit more money means that the quality assurance is there much better quality level than um i've seen coming from some of the chinese factories even if they use Swiss movements. So they didn't cut corners on the water resistance rating either. Uh, 50 meters is perfect. You don't have to worry. You can take it in the shower, have a bath with it, go swimming with it, but um, pretty much you would not use it as a dive watch. But then this is a dress watch. I mean, really, would you want to go there? You're going to have to change your strap anyway. I would never use a, a leather strap to in the shower or in the bath or, or swimming. So... Um, you know, 50 meters is overkill, but it just means you just don't have to worry. Get caught in the rain or accidentally put your hand in, in some water to pick something up and forgot to take your watch off. Dry off your strap and you, you're probably going to be okay with a strap, but not, not ideal. Um, but your watch is going to be fine. So I really do um, think I, I actually like this a lot. So let's see what it says on the back. Italian croc calf. Well, it's going to say something different for your one. Um... Uh, I'm just trying to see Renzo. So they they've got a, a little stamp on that, though that's an ink stamp rather than an embossing stamp. But the you know, fact, oh let's let's get this off. You want to see how this works? You just press it down with your fingernail, and it comes out just like that. And then to put it in, I'm doing this in front of the camera, uh, so I can't really see. Um, I'd have to go closer with my eyes. I'm very short sighted. But literally, you've got a pin here and a pin at the other end on a spring bar. There's a couple of holes, one here and one here. So you put one end in the hole, 
Do it from behind always, just in case you scratch the front, which you don't want to do, and push down, and there we go. I think I'm in. It should click once it gets in the right spot. There we are. I'm back in. So I did that from a distance, couldn't see what I was doing, being very short-sighted, and behind the camera here, it's almost impossible to see. So if I can do that, you can do that. So um, I don't know the price of their straps. I didn't look at that if they're having those as extras, but I do think uh, if you have an option to do that um, and you like the look of some of their other straps, the fact that they come with a quick release is is, is a plus. And uh, even though I've got, well, let me just show you. I've got a huge, tons of boxes of straps that I, that I change here. Um, pick a few out, you know, just as an example couple of boxes here right um, I got like a whole shelf full of these things and I use tools to change them and sometimes it takes me five minutes because I'm, I'm clumsy I never kind of got got that down pat so I'm liking the quick release even this one here's a quick release so a big plus definitely uh, so let's test uh, this I'm testing this for a sapphire glass if it lights up at all it's sapphire glass like three or four bars typically if it doesn't light up it's mineral glass exactly what I'd like to see. In fact, it's four bars plus. So this is sapphire glass, uh, as promised. Um, and that is one thing I always test on every watch that I review. Um, caught a couple out, so uh, <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't this one. So um, this is, I see they're using screws here for the uh, uh, for the back, but it's a very nice brush finish, very simple. Oh, that's what I would have liked to see on the front, and they could have put the word Renzo on the back, but um, that's a minor gripe. I still think it looks awesome. Um, and, you know, they, and they've not really cut corners on the design for the price. So let's talk about uh, other prices for a, a minute. Uh, talking about other watches, I took did take a look on Kickstarter, see what other watches are out there that are uh, mechanical um, and uh, or from the past. I beg your pardon, any of the ones that are mechanical from the past. But had a look. You know, there's a few other quartz battery driven. Uh, chronographs out there uh, one or two are a bit dressy but it's you know this is kind of middle of the range price wise actually it's uh, under two hundred dollars I think 199 and when I look out there I found some more expensive like there's the Maxton which is running right now that costs more uh, but it's a more of a racing chronograph not a dress chronograph and some different features to it um, somebody who wants a racing chronograph would like that I really like the dressy style personally I can kind of wear this almost as a dress watch but this is much dressier um, so I'm actually thinking about backing it or asking if I could buy this one from them so there we go um, anyhow um, so there's that there are some, there's one or two cheaper but then I looked at those for example there's one up there called the discovery but that's using 304 stainless steel, which is um, potentially, potentially has pitting issues. This is 316L stainless steel, which most watches on Kickstarter will have, which is marine grade. It's uh, much more corrosion resistance. The 304 stainless steel of the Discovery is um, going to be the same kind of stainless steel you get on your... Um, Kind of cutlery, I guess, um, which might sound good, um, but you can you you sweat, you have salty skin, and um, you get more corrosion from the salt. So really, every single watch should be at least three one sixteen L stainless steel, unless you're doing an exotic material like uh, bronze or titanium or something like that. So uh, other things about the Discovery, just comparing, you know, it's a little bit cheaper, but then it has a it has a Seiko movement in it. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, in fact, the Seiko movement has its own pluses as well as minuses, but it's mineral glass rather than sapphire glass, so it's, you can scratch the lens. It's a Chinese assembly, uh, which means you have much... Uh, oh, you know, I can't really judge every chi uh, Chinese factory the same. Uh, that would be unfair to the good ones, but there's a lot of Chinese assembly factories. They're rather dirty. They don't really do good QA practices. For example, the water rating test every single one of these watches is going to be water tested um uh, in in the uh, swiss factory i talked to the I talked to them about that before doing this review the standard practice uh, watches coming from the chinese assembly plants is they just random theoretically randomly pick like one one out of 30 or 
one out of so many and just test that. And then I wonder if they actually do that. So what I like about Renzo, uh, they are going to the factory to personally supervise the QA. So they'll be there in person and every single watch is going to go through the water test. Now this is overkill for a dress watch, but they're serious. They want to have this watch succeed. Uh, they've got other plans for other watches coming out in the future, possibly mechanical ones too. So, you know, they've gone for a higher grade leather. Um, and uh, Oh, that's another thing about the Discovery. That one was uh, just said leather. So typically, I, I really read between the lines quite well, having done a lot of Kickstarter campaigns in terms of reviews um, and running a backer group for some time now. So when I see it just says leather, that's either going to be one of two things. It's either going to be PU leather, which is artificial kind of a plasticky, rubbery material, PU leather. Uh, or it's going to be um, genuine leather, which is the lowest grade. And for the price point, it doesn't even say genuine leather. They would probably, it's 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 it, to their benefit to say genuine because it sounds better than leather. So it's almost certainly a PU leather mineral grass with a case that could corrode. I, I really wouldn't touch that one personally. Um, I mean, definitely it's it's a little bit cheaper. So I, I think what you're getting for the price this is not the most expensive quartz out there but it's in the right ballpark uh, in the right price range uh, for a good quality quartz and now talking about uh, other watches um, when we when we talk about mechanical watches this is a mechanical one as opposed to a quartz that I'm wearing here this is an entry-level mechanical price range this was also a Kickstarter my, actually my favorite Kickstarter from 2017 now I think about it um, you know, you, you want to get one of those, you're paying about double the cost of this. And you want to get a Swiss uh, mechanical watch of the entry level price on Kickstarter for um, the, the probably the cheapest Swiss mechanical is uh, chronograph is going to be like the Valjo 7750. Uh, four or five campaigns in the last six months were running those 800 for the super early build or around about $800. Um, I have seen once one place only cheaper than that by a couple of hundred dollars but normally you're paying at least eight hundred dollars in fact one campaign even ran at a thousand dollars and these are kickstarter these are not retail pricings you expect a couple of thousand for for that at retail so you've got a sub two hundred dollar watch it's basically battery driven as opposed to mechanical uh the uh, but it's basically a quarter of the price of the mechanical um, for an equivalent Swiss mechanical. So this is your entry level um, quality movement, I think. I'm not going to call it a luxury watch. Uh, the Renzo may be doing that. I think any watch that's just a few hundred dollars can't be classified as a luxury watch. But if it if they're saying that it has luxury features, then yes, it does. It has the same features as a luxury watch in terms of sapphire glass, quality of leather, uh, uh, QA practices, uh, quality of printing, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, be, being a Swiss-made watch, it says Swiss-made at the bottom as well, by the way. So um, definitely a good value. I'm really happy I had a chance to review this, and uh, I'm trying to. <laughs> if I'm delaying, I'm trying to find things I don't like with this because I like to say negative as well as positive, and and there, and there's very little. I mean, personally, I prefer mechanical because I'm just totally in love with the complexity of mechanical watches but if I was on a, a budget and wanted a, a very nice dress quartz that could double as a dress watch which this can many many chronos can't uh, and uh, but with some very nice features um, you might prefer a different color but, but but do take a look at this one it's unusual if you can pick your colors pick something that's different because if you grow a collection you probably won't get an option to get something like this again you'll have more normal color choices. So for something, it's very cleanly done. It's also very practical. I'm gonna put a picture up now of a, another chronograph that I absolutely fell for that was um, also quartz, the only other quartz one that I really liked. I didn't get it, and the reason I didn't get it was because um, it was impractical. The uh, second hand, not the second hand, the, in, the, uh, all the uh, little markers on the subdials were like once every five minutes or every five seconds so you try and time something that's three minutes and seven seconds you haven't got a clue is that three minutes is it two minutes or is it four minutes you know you just really don't know where you are so the chronograph on that was 
beautiful. It was a very nice multicolored watch. Um, but it was 100% impractical. I couldn't even use the chronograph, and that just annoyed me so much. I didn't go for it, though. I loved the look of it. This one I loved the look of. Um, loved the price point. I think it's a very good value, and it's practical as a chronograph. It's very clear, easy to read, and I'm the short-sighted guy who has trouble doing his straps. And if I can do this, um, I'm extremely myopic, then probably this is a good chronograph. You could actually use it as a chronograph. So I think I've probably covered everything in terms of a first impression. I'm feeling really bad because this is a very rare review for me that I normally come up with something negative. The only negative takeaway um, is the logo. And it's not a killer. It's not standing out like extremely. And this is just me being really finicky. So Renzo, if you're watching... Um, Hope you consider making uh, your logo image bigger and maybe put the Renzo in small print underneath. That would be more stylish. Um, but I love your watches and I can't wait to see what you come out with next. Thank you for letting me have a chance to review this one.